going to love it! Hey there guys, Sweet Tooth again, and welcome back to Honest Reviews. Yay! This week's episode is For Whom the Sweetie Bells Toll, which I know the title is a play on the poem, I believe. But since I'm from a rock background, all I'm gonna do is this, with a beatbox! <laughs> So yeah, our episode this week starts off with uh, Sweetie Belle trying to design costumes for the play that the Cutie Mark Crusaders have got going on, but Rarity is like, oh, oh, this is, oh, you know what, I'm redesigning these, I'm sure my sister would appreciate it. And wouldn't you know, every pony does love the dresses. They didn't really much care for the play, but then again, we only heard like the first line, so I don't know how, how we would take from it, except the dresses are while cute, also bring back flashbacks. Anyway, Sweetie Belle's kind of peeved about this because she's been like, Oh, the Rarity, you're just hogging up all the glory again! <laughs> but anyway, to get revenge on Rarity, Sweetie Belle sabotages one of the costumes that Rarity has for silver something. Yeah, I'm a real fan, but at least she makes a comeback because hey, I've only got no time for that! It's sort of another sisterly thing going around here, isn't it? I mean, sabotaging your sister's work that she put so much effort on, and a few weeks earlier, a younger sister is getting annoyed by the constant pestering and caring of an older sister? Yeah, Santa kind of sounds similar, doesn't it? Not that that's bad, but it's just... Thinking about it, there are similarities, but... Then again, maybe that's what they were going for, I don't know. But then we get to what I think is my personal favorite part of the whole episode, and that is the dream sequence with Luna. Because this is what I pretty much thought that this whole episode was going to focus on for the most part anyway. Just Sweet Belle getting a spiritual visitation from Luna, and Luna pretty much gives advice to... Sweetie Belle about the whole thing and showing the consequences and all that good stuff. Including Sweetie Belle's fifth birthday, which she thought was a disaster. Rarity on her part was like, No, I can't make this good for Sweetie Belle. I must, I must. <laughs> you know, all that. So it's kind of taking a sort of Christmas cow approach. But it's kind of disguised well enough not for you to notice. I mean, like I said, I noticed, but... I don't know, maybe I'm just so think on that, but it's still good otherwise. Like I said, it's my favorite part. Animation, creativity, top notch, and just nice to see Luna again, even though you have the question, why is she even here? Why is she even giving this advice to Sweetie Belle? Like, she did mention that obviously she had this kind of background with Celestia, her sister for sure, but other than that, why? Is it gonna be played up to something major in the future? Who knows? I'm just questioning a little, even though I shouldn't. It's just a kid's show. But with that said, the dream sequence itself is sort of undertoned. Sort of so that it would be for the little children approach. It's nothing all oh, Blair or oh, Pink Floyd or whatever, but it's just enough to just to appreciate how much they can get away with in terms of creativity. and. I like that, but then we get back to the real world of Sweetie Belle. She's sorry for what she's done. She's got to go make right what she's done, and that's pretty much the rest of the episode right there. Like my whole act. Yeah. Obviously, this could have been sorted out in like two minutes, a minute, two sentences. Oh no, rarity! I sabotaged your thing. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. I understand. No, oh, no. Oh. It's still there, regardless, but it's like, took a whole act to do that, and Luna makes another appearance near the end to help out non-dream-wise, which I think, thinking about it, is a little offsetting. Like, it would have made sense if she just appeared in a dream. Like, I don't know, Sweetie Belle might have been fantasizing about Luna or something, I don't know, just for her to appear in a dream, or... Maybe Luna did attend for that, but just to her to appear in actual real life and then to say, no, no, this isn't a dream, I'm, I'm, I'm really here. I don't know, like I said, 
the fact that Sweeba has a similar situation going on as Luna did, even though Sweetie Bells was like just sabotaging the clothes and Luna was like upsetting the bands of all of the world as we know it, but I don't know, maybe Luna sees something in that, but it's something like that doesn't ruin the episode really. There's just a few things questionable, but overall it's it's still pretty good. I've got no real complaints. Just ponders, really. So yeah, after watching this week's episode of Friendship is Magic, For Whom the Sweetie Bells Toll, I think I'm gonna give this episode, um, let's give it a low key. Yay! I mean, in my honest opinion, it's a little better than Some Pony to Watch Over Me from a couple of weeks ago, but I think that's just mainly because of the dream sequence itself. Like, oh man! When they delivered, it's like, yeah! They did it just fine, but I think, in terms of the whole sister feud going on and then resolving itself, it's sort of similar to the previous episode, like I mentioned. But, like I said, it's not really awful, but it's just so similar that it's a little distracting, but for what it is, I enjoyed it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode as well, or not, you can comment either way, I would love to hear what you have to say, and until next week's episode, Take care.